heart went This time, we're going to learn how to solve systems of linear equations using the Gaussian elimination method. So for this method, we have to create an augmented matrix. And augmented matrices are made by writing down the coefficient matrix. So let's start with that. We have our coefficient matrix as 2, negative 1, 3, 1, 4, negative 2, and 3, 1, 5. After every row in the in a coefficient matrix, you'll separate the constant matrix with a colon, and you'll have it 5 for the first row, colon 1 for the second row, and colon 2 for the third row, which represents your third equation. This is what we know as our augmented matrix. For Gaussian elimination method, the idea is to transform the augmented matrix so you have an augmented matrix. You're going to transform that. You're going to transform that papuntang row echelon form. Question here is, what is the row echelon form or what is the echelon form? Okay. So in matrices, you, we have echelon forms, and there are two types of echelon forms. It could be a row echelon form or a reduced row echelon form. So for Gaussian elimination, it requires us to transform the augmented matrix papuntang row echelon form. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Kapag po row echelon form, meron silang tinatawag na leading entries. Itong leading entries na to, ito yung, mga, ito yung unang entry sa bawat row na hindi zero. So, these are non-zero entries which comes first in every row. So, for the first row, ang unang non-zero dito is 2. The second row, ang unang non-zero dito is 1. And the third row, ang unang non-zero dito ay 3. Which means, 2, 1, and 3 are the leading entries or the leading coefficients in this augmented matrix. Now, for this to become a row echelon form, sinasabi po than that, in row echelon forms, the succeeding a uh, leading coefficient or leading entry should always be to the right of the of the leading entry before it. Okay? So sa Tagalog, yun daw leading entry ng susunod na row ay dapat nasa kanan ng leading entry ng row sa taas niya. Take for example, first row. Ang first row mo, ang leading entry niya nasa first column. Dapat yung susunod na leading entry sa row na to, which is on the second row, dapat nasa kanan ng first column, which means, dapat nandito siya. So, for the row echelon form, dapat ito yung ating leading coefficient or leading entry, which means, this particular entry must be 0. Next, so kung ito yung non-zero, ito yung non-zero, ito yung zero na kunwari. For the third row, Hindi ka pwede magkaroon ng leading entry dito. Kasi ang requirement, dapat nasa kanan siya ng leading entry sa taas niya. E ang leading entry sa taas niya ay nasa second column, which means for the third row, dapat nandito ang leading entry mo. Andito. Which means, ito dapat ay zero. Ito dapat ay zero. Okay? The majority of reference books in matrices requires that for an echelon form, to be row echelon form, dapat daw, etong diagonal na to, which are your leading entries, should be equivalent to 1. Pero may mga reference books naman na hindi nire-require na maging 1 ito. Okay? So for me, okay lang kahit wag nang maging 1. Ngayon, ang gagawin natin, maggagawa tayo ng formula para magawa natin ang paraan na maging 0 itong mga entries na to to complete the row echelon form. Okay. Ngayon, kung ito yung naging zero, ano magiging itsura ng augmented matrix? Without the constant matrix, magiging, kung zero to, magiging upper triangular matrix siya. So, instead of remembering it as the row echelon form, you can simply remember that if we're under Gaussian elimination, kailangan maging upper triangular yung coefficient matrix natin. 
okay? So the question here is, how do we do the elementary row operations para maging zero itong target elements natin? Okay? Now, for that, ibig sabihin, magkakaroon ako ng bagong second row at magkakaroon din ako ng bagong third row dahil kailangan ko itong palitan. Para mapalitan sila, kailangan gumawa tayo ng equations. Okay? So, I will note that R2, the second row, prime, will have new sets of elements. So, I'll have a new second row, which will be equivalent to gagawa ako ng equation. Yung equation na gagawin ko, para bang ano to, simpleng arithmetic equation lang, para lang maging zero ito. And when we do equations, when we create equations, we use another row, gumagamit tayo ng isa pang row kung saan natin ibabase yung ating formula or equation na gagawin natin or solution na gagawin natin. And in this case, the easiest to use is the first row because walang change na gagawin dito. We will not be using, we will not, we are not required to change anything on the first row dahil ang papalitan lang naman natin ay si 1, nasa second row siya, si 3 at si 1 na nasa third row. So the easiest Row to use is the first row for this. Kung gusto kong maging zero ito, you have to create the equation based on this value and on the value of the reference row, so ito yun, nakatapat niya. So yung column, yung entry dun sa column nakatapat niya. So in the first column, I'm going to change 1 papuntang 0, but I'll, I'll create the equation based on 2. So, ang pwede kong gawin dito is, I can take the first row and subtract from that doble ng second row. Simple arithmetic lang to ha. Kailangan nyo lang mag-isip ng sequence or expression na kung saan pag pinag-add, pag pinag-multiply, you can introduce multiplication, magiging zero na ang result. So, ang nangyari dito, kukunin mo daw yung elements sa row 1 in the same column. So, kukunin ko to. Diba, dito tayo. Ito yung papalitan ko. So, kukunin ko yung katapat niya sa row 1, which is 2. That will represent R1. So, 2 minus 2 times ni R2 nung katapat. So, 2 minus 2 times R2, which is 1. 2 minus 2 times 1, that would be 0. So, magkakaroon tayo ng bagong element dito. And that is how you transform it to 0. So, kukopyahin ko lang muna ito. Kasi wala namang changes sa kanya. So, that's 2, negative 1, 3, colon. We have 5. And then, for the first element, magbabago na to. Applying this formula. Kaya nga, R2 prime ito. So, we have 0, sabi natin kanina. And then, you will do the same on all the elements on that particular row. Kaya nga, sinabi, magkakaroon ng bagong second row. So, dito na tayo. Second column na tayo. So, I'll take first row element. That's negative 1. R1, negative 1 minus 2 times 4. So, negative 1 minus 2 times 4, negative 1 minus 8, that would be negative 9. Next, third column, apply the same formula. So, row 1, 3, minus 2 times negative 2. So, we have 3 minus 2 times negative 2. We have 3 plus 4, that would give us 7. Hold on to that. Fourth column. So we have 5 minus 2 times 1. 5 minus 2 times 1. We get 3. Next, we can simultaneously while we're changing R2, pwede na rin nating gawan ng bagong third row, yung augmented matrix natin. And this time, I'm going to use Kasi ang target ko muna dito, yung unang entry muna, which is 3. So, ibabase ko yung formula ko para matransform si 3 papuntang 0 sa first row ulit. Kasi pinagsabay ko eh. Siyempre, hindi ko pwedeng gawing basihan si R2 dahil nagbago na siya. Sabay siyang magpapalit ng values. So, I'll use row 1 ulit. And then for this, isipin niya na lang LCM, yun yung pinakmabilis na way para magtransform tayo sa 0. The least common multiple. So, between 2 and 3, their least common multiple is 6. So, isipin mo, what should be multiplied to 2? What should be multiplied to 3? Para maging 6 ang bawat isa sa kanila. Okay? So, for the first row, I have to multiply it by 3. 
So, three, three, three times ng first row, three times two, six yon. And then, the third row, pag multiply ko siya ng two, two times ni third row, six din yon. So, this will be six, this will be six, and then, for it to be zero, I'll subtract this two. So, I'll apply this formula on every element in the third row. We're in automatically zero na to, di ba? Kasi sa kanya natin binase yung formula natin. Applying the same formula on the remaining elements. So, apply natin dito kay 1 sa second column. So, 3 times ni R1. So, 3 times negative 1. That's negative 3. Minus 2 times 1. So, that would be 2. So, we have negative 3. Negative 3 minus 2. We get negative 5. Next. We have 3 times ni R1, that's 9, minus 2 times ni R3, that's 10. So, 9 minus 10, we get negative 1. Fourth column, we have 3 times R1, that's 15, minus 2 times 2, 4. So, 15 minus 4, we get 11. This will be our new augmented matrix. So, from this new augmented matrix, alin na lang yung ating papalitan? C, negative 5 na lang. Kailangan maging 0 siya, di ba? Para maging upper triangular matrix ito. So, which means, isa na lang yung gagawan ko ng formula. So, I'll have an R3 prime. Okay, I'll do an R3 prime ulit. May bago kong R3. I will have a new set third row, and that would be your, my R3 prime. And para mabuo ko yung equation, for the new third row, meron akong dalawang options ng rows na pwedeng gamitin. I can use the first row, I can use the second row. So let's say, since si negative 5 yung kailangan maging 0, sa kanya dapat nakabase yung formula na gagamitin ko. Okay, let's say, pinili mo si first row. So dito ako nakatingin. Ang pwede kong gawin dito is, kuhanin ko si third row, negative 5, Diba? Negative 5. And then, I'll multiply the first row by 5. Kasi ito, negative 5. Tapos, pag minultiply ko to ng 5, negative 5 din siya. If I subtract the 2, negative 5 minus negative 5, that would be 0. Okay? Magsi-zero ngayon to. Ang problema, kapag pinili mo yung first row, ay itong element na to. Diba, target natin maging 0 siya. If you apply this formula here on the first column, this will be 0 minus 5 times 2. And that would be 0 minus 10. Which means, pag nag-transform ka ng third row, magkaka-element ulit dito. Negative 10, 0. So, hindi natin na-retain yung upper triangular matrix. That's why, kapag ganito yung setup, do not use the first row. Kasi, magbabalik or uulit or babalik yung mga values, yung mga non-zero values, dun sa mga entries na kailangan maging 0. Instead, for the third row, I will use the second row entries. Kasi ito, 0, 0. Kahit anong formula gawin mo dito, hindi niya maapektuhan yung first column element sa third row. 0 pa rin yun. So, let me erase this and change my formula using the second row. Okay? So, for this, for this two rows, ang least common multiple nitong dalawa is negative 45. Eh. So, I'm going to Multiply the second row by 5. And then I'll multiply the third row by 9. And then simply subtract the 2. Kasi ito, 5 times negative 9 is negative 45. 9 times negative 5 is negative 45. Subtract the 2, that becomes 0. Okay? So let's apply this formula for the third row using the second row, ha? Doon nakabase yung formula natin. Let me erase this side lang to make space. So, ano mangyayari? Ang mangyayari ay, kokopyahin ko yung first two rows kasi wala namang change sa kanila. Third row lang daw yung mag-change. So, that would be 2, negative 1, 3, 5, and then 0, negative 9, 7, 3. Okay? And then, we have uh, 0 na to kasi diba 5, 5 times R2, so 0, minus 9 times 0, 0 pa rin. And then, of course, we did this formula to make this 0. So, automatic 0 na to. So, we'll apply the formula on this 2. So, we have there 5 times 7. That's 35. Minus 9 times negative 1. 
So that would be 35 plus 9. So we have 44 positive. And then we have um, 5 times 3. Second row. 5 times 3, 15. 15 minus 9 times 11. 99. So 15 minus 99. That gives you negative 84. And, okay. Kapag na-transform mo na siya into an upper triangle, di ba, upper triangle na to, we will disintegrate, or aalsin natin yung augmented matrix, ibabalik natin siya sa matrix form niya. Di ba yung matrix form nito is, the coefficient matrix, which is 2, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 9, 0, 3, 7, and 44, multiplied by the, babalik tayo sa matrix form, so it is x, y, z, which will be equivalent to the constants, which is 5, 3, and negative 84. And for this, kapag nabalik mo na siya in the matrix form, let's erase this. Okay. We'll do multiplication. Okay. And for the multiplication, let me say, I'll start with the third row first. So that would be 0, x. 0y, okay, starting from the third row. I will get 0x, 0y plus 44z. 0x plus 0y plus 44z equals what? Equals negative 84. And that will result to 44z equals negative 84. Divide both sides by 44 you'll be able to get an answer for Z. And that is your negative 21 over 11. Okay? Next, upon getting Z, I'll, I'll multiply the second row naman. So my second row will be 0x, negative 9y, plus 7z, equals what? Equals 3. But since I've solved for Z, what I'm going to do is substitute this value here so that I can solve for y. So we have, have negative 9y plus 7 times z. z is negative 21 over 11 equal to 3. So that will have, therefore we'll have negative 9y equal to um, 3 minus 7 times negative 21 over 11. And then divide both sides by negative 9 you get y equivalent to, where's my calculator? That's 3 minus 7, okay, sorry. 3 minus 7 times negative 21 over 11, divide by negative 9, and that's negative 20 over 11. And then multiplying the first row to this variable matrix, you will get 2x minus y plus 3z equals first constant natin is 5. And then again, substitute the values we are able to get. So that would be 2x minus y is 20, negative 20 over 11 plus 3 times z, which is negative 21 over 11, and then equate it to 5. Transpose this 2 to the right. You'll get 2x equals 5 plus negative 20 over 11, so minus 20 over 11, minus 3 times negative 21 over 11. And divide both sides by 2 to get x. And x will be equivalent to 5 minus 20 over 11, minus 3 times negative 21 over 11, divide by, uh, divide by 2. And that's 49 over 11. And if you're going to notice, these three answers, we were able to solve them using Kramer's and matrix inversion. And we've arrived at the same answers using Gaussian elimination.